Today, we're going to help my friend Lavender prepare to reduce her driving anxiety. And in doing so, I hope that you will learn how to plan to overcome your driving anxiety. Hello, my name is Claire and welcome to Generation Calm, where you will learn how to reduce your stress and anxiety naturally in your own time so that your mind and body feel great. Now, before we get started, I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button so that you get a new video from me every single week. This video is specifically for my friend Lavender, but in making this video, I'm hoping to reach plenty of you out there who also have a driving anxiety. I'm hoping that this video will get you from wanting to get rid of your anxiety about driving to actually having a plan in action and feel motivated to do something about it. By the end of this video, you'll have the right set of tools so that you can make your own plan. So let's get started. Remember, if you want more information about actually what driving anxiety is, I just made another video about that and I'll put the link up here. Now, Lavender is in her 40s. She's happily married with two children and she's never really felt comfortable driving but she's always done it and her daily routine includes driving, taking, taking the kids on the school run, going to work, doing the grocery shopping but her zone of comfort, the places where she will comfortably drive to has shrunk over recent years. Nothing in particular has caused that to her knowledge, but it's starting to impact on her life. She's completely avoiding motorway driving now, very scared of taking the wrong exit, getting lost, getting stuck somewhere with no way of getting home. And now she's avoided meeting up with her best friend because it's in an unknown city that she doesn't know very well. Even though it's just the next city to her, it's too scary and too out of her zone of comfort. So if this sounds similar to you, doesn't have to be about the motorway driving, but maybe your lack of driving confidence, your driving anxieties are starting to encroach on your lifestyle, the things that you're able to do, then this video is going to help you. The basic premise of overcoming driving anxiety is that you drive as often as possible so that the fear response is no longer triggered. So let's go over some of the tips I would give to Lavender, my friend. Tip number one. I touched on this in the previous video about what is driving anxiety, but self-awareness is so important. You know your body better than anybody else. So literally, every time you drive or even choose not to drive, write it down in a driving journal. Write down your thoughts, your feelings, your behavior and any sensations that you might be feeling when you get that, that anxiety. Lavender's done this and she's written down her thoughts and feelings and she started to pull out some themes and in particular noticing that she always worries about what other people are thinking about her, especially when she's driving. Tip number two. Think of this whole new world that's going to open up to you with this newfound skill. What are you going to be able to do that you've always wanted to do when you learn how to drive with confidence? Is it that you're going to be able to go on a wonderful day trip with your family, with you driving? Is it that you'll be able to take a fantastic job opportunity that comes up for you? Are you going to be able to visit the kids when they leave for university? Write down these big goals that you have and be clear about them. These are what are going to keep you going when the going gets tough. So write down your ultimate goal and how it would feel to achieve it. Lavender's big goal is that she knows her, one of her, her eldest child will be going to university in about three years time. She wants to be able to go and visit her at university without having to wait until the time is right for her husband. She wants to be able to get in the car and go drive to that city. That's good motivation. Tip number three. So after Lavender has kept her journal for about three weeks, she's going to be more aware of what her triggers are. 
And now she's going to make a list of all the places she can visit to step by step, moving from something that really doesn't scare her that much, isn't really pushing her too much out of her comfort zone, to her ultimate goal. This is not about pushing yourself in at the deep end. I try to think of it like learning karate. And you know how you have the different colours of karate belts. You start at white, you move on to yellow, all the way to black belt. You don't go straight to black belt. You learn each segment and only move on to the next colour after you've accomplished everything that you needed for the previous colour. Same with this. So here's Lavender's step. Okay, so here's Lavender's list. Her first trip will be to drive to the shops that are just one mile from her usual zone of comfort. And she's going to do that enough times that it no longer triggers her fear response. Only at that point will she then move on to her next step, which is to drive past the slip road that enters the motorway and that will be during a quiet time, because during quiet times it won't be as fear-provoking for her. When she's done that enough times that it no longer elicits the, the fear response from her, then she will drive past the motorway entrance at a busy time of traffic. Then again, moving on, she'll drive on the motorway for one exit during a quiet time on a Sunday with a trusted friend or family member. This will be her first time on the motorway for a long time, so she needs to make it as easy for her as possible. Knowing that it's only one exit doesn't sound too threatening. Knowing it's going to be on a quiet Sunday with a trusted friend will make the whole process a lot easier. But again, doing it enough times that it no longer triggers that fear response. Then she'll drive on the motorway for two exits by herself during the quiet traffic. This will be her first time driving on the motorway by herself for a long, long time too. So again, it needs to be during quiet time when she's ready for it. Um, she doesn't want to push herself too far. And if at any point she feels like while she's doing this list, that the actions are too difficult for her, then she can revisit this list and change things around. That's no problem. Her next one will be to drive on the motorway by herself during a slightly higher traffic volume. And then finally, the end of this particular list is to drive to meet her friend in a nearby city. Now remember, she's not going to be doing this straight away. She's going to have worked her way up to it during each one of these steps, she will have gained confidence before she actually does this big ultimate goal of hers. And it will be such a motivating thing to do because she really wants to meet her best friend. Who wouldn't? It's um, such a nice event to have. So this will be a good motivation for her. Tip number four. We often not only avoid the actual thing that scares us, in this case driving, but we also try to push out of our minds the thoughts about that thing that scares us. This is kind of like, you may have heard about this before, the pink elephant. If somebody says to you, don't think about a pink elephant, don't, don't think about it, what do you do? You can't help but think about a pink elephant. Same with driving. If you've got a driving anxiety, you're going to notice it more people talking about driving, thinking of places where you need to go, where you, you have to drive there. Maybe you'll notice that there's been motorway accidents more frequently because you're kind of primed for finding that information. If you find that you're avoiding thinking about driving, again, write it down. Write those thoughts down, capture them, then just let them go. They have more of a hold on you the more you try to just push them away. So write them out. Tip number five, plan, plan, oh yeah, plan. I just read a book by Chris Hadfield, who's a Canadian astronaut, brilliant book, I'd recommend it. But he talks about how astronauts plan for their space mission for about three years and they do simulations over and over and over again of events that 
might eventually happen, but they might not. So they're always preparing for a disaster. Because you know what? If you're an astronaut, you're out in space, you don't have hospitals, you don't have emergency services, you don't have anyone else but your own fellow astronauts and yourself. So you need to know what to do in the case of any emergency, anything that could possibly go wrong. And there's an awful lot that could go wrong out in space. Now, it might seem morbid to think about every single way you could possibly have an accident, but it actually makes sense. We do it with children all the time. We do fire drills at school. We teach them how to call the emergency services with a dummy phone. So why not learn what to do in the event of something going wrong with your car? in the event of a breakdown, in the event of an accident, what is it you need to do? And just run through it so that you know. Plan ahead for what it is that bothers you because fear feeds on the unknown. And if you start to get knowledgeable, that anxiety has nothing to feed on. For Lavender, her main fears are motorways and in particular getting off at the wrong exit and getting lost. So she can learn a lot, a lot more about motorways, maybe making sure that she knows the different exits, actually studying a map before she goes out on the roads, making sure she knows exactly how to use the GPS or Google Maps on her phone, making sure she always has a trusty paper map in her car just in case the phone lose battery. This knowledge will give you confidence in the event of a problem. Tip number six. When you're anxious about something, you're probably having negative thoughts about a future event. And a typical sentence that runs through your head might start with the words, what if? And to that I say, so what? Let me give you an example. Lavender might say to herself, what if I get off at the wrong exit? So what? Well, then I'll get lost. So what? Well, I'll have to pull over and it might not be a safe area. So what? So I'll have to phone my husband. So what? Well, then I'll be really embarrassed because I'm lost and I'm a grown adult. So what? And you see, each time I say so what, the question has a little less power. And eventually, Lavender will see that really something terrible is not going to happen if she gets off on the wrong exit. Tip number seven. So let's say you've done all this planning and you're ready to go on a drive, but you're starting to get really nervous about it. That's where a good breathing technique will come in. And practicing beforehand will really help you in the moment in the car. Practice relaxation and slowing down your breath before you even get in the car. You can use my progressive muscle relaxation video or any one of my meditations. And just practice over time, learning how to regulate your breathing consciously. Because if you're the kind of person who, when they're about to join a motorway, kind of <gasps> holds their breath while they do it, What's going to happen is that you're going to get those anxiety and panic sensations in your body because that's what happens when you hold your breath and you're going to start to feel dizzy and you'll worry that you can even do the driving safely at all. Even practicing 15 minutes of meditation or yoga before going for a drive will really reduce your strength, stress response and replace it with a relaxation response. That's what we want. So tip number eight, this is my final tip for both you and my friend Lavender. Have a phrase handy that you can repeat to yourself when you're in the car. Write it down on a post-it note, stick it on your dashboard. And it's a phrase that's gonna be easy for you to remember when you start to feel that panic rising. And I might tell Lavender to do something like the panic sensations are just my body trying to look after me, but I got this. 
So I hope this was helpful for you. Hopefully you will now have a plan of action for overcoming your driving anxiety, just like Lavender has. You can absolutely do this. Just picture your goal, plan for it, and then go out there and do it. So thanks for watching. The next video will all be about the action of driving, getting out there and doing this. Remember, you have the power to do this. Just take it one step at a time. Remember to share this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button so you get more of these videos. And I'll see you next time.